Brent Johnson, and I am once again at First Congregational Church in downtown Columbus, Ohio, and with me again is Kevin Jones, organist here at the church, and we uh, are at the gallery organ now, completely different instrument than the one we saw before. There's a Kimball organ in the chancel of the church, and if you missed that video, there's a link to it up here or down in the description, but I'm interested to hear about this uh, organ here. Tell me what we've got. So what we have here is a 1972 three-manual Baccarat. Um, it's uh, 47 stops, 73 ranks. Um, it is very, very much uh, what you would expect to see from a background of this vintage. Um, however, I think this organ has a lot of unique features. Certainly, um, you know, Beckrott's lineage in the Schnitger tradition is there, but some accommodations are made for liturgical music, like a Celeste on this well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so there are things like that. We have Spanish trumpets right, right above us. Uh, eight and four, which are, are fun to play with. They really are quite <laughs> piercing. Uh, and um, things like a, a ten and two-thirds wood quint in the pedal. Um, uh, interesting mutations here. There's a bass sync in the pedal, which is just like a small reed. Yeah. It's, it's really <laughs> versatile and remarkable. Um, and there, the cornet, there are cornets on all divisions. The cornet on the swell, as you'll hear when we get to it, has a, a septium, a seventh in oh, it, wow. which is really remarkable. Yeah. We have tremulos on, on the positive and um, the swell. The positive is a root positive. Okay. Um, we have its, its mechanical uh, key action. Um, but electric stop action. Okay. Well, we should add for those that don't know, Beckerath was a German builder, still is a German builder, um, and they were very much on the forefront of organ reform, uh, especially with organs they built here in America. They were well ahead of other builders, so this bears a lot of the hallmarks of that period. Absolutely. You know, there's a 19, I think it's 56 Beckerath in Cleveland, mm -hmm. um, which is a remarkable instrument, but very much more directed towards the North German Baroque. Um, they're roughly the same size, but they're wildly different instruments. Really? So you can see the development <laughs> okay. of his of his of his concept and his world. It's it's fascinating. I think this organ is the sweet spot. Okay, it's the sweet spot. So he died in 1976. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, yeah, it's a, a remarkably versatile instrument. Well, let's just start with uh, take me through wherever you want to start. Well, let's start with the grate okay. because there everything on this organ is built around the eight foot principle on this grate, which is is just a work of art unto itself. So I'll just play a scale because that's just what you need to hear. Oh, it's remarkable. And you would think, wait, there are 72 ranks sitting on top of this. How's that possibly going to support that? But the way it develops and the way the scaling is absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's it's very it's much gentler than I thought. It has some bright edge to it, but it's not nearly as loud as I would assume for what we're standing in front of. No, and now of course you know from here it's it's another 20 feet in the air, sure. but still. Um, it can be used, it's an incredibly effective solo stop. Oh wow. Which is remarkable. Okay. And then built on that, of course, is a, is a chorus. So... Just enough little, mm -hmm. you know, chif to get it going. And then the, the two-foot octave is... on that we have two mixtures two stops of mixtures um, for my money this is one mixture that's been divided um, but you know that's my uneducated opinion the the six rank mixture I think is it pitched at one and a third um, and of course what that means in Baccarat language is that the the fifth and the sixth rank are actually doubling the top two pitches which makes tuning really fun um, <laughs> because they tend to get together and agree on a different pitch. But he did that for power. He wanted to get the power. So, and you can hear that. Yeah. And then when you add the cymbal, which is another three ranks, it's really, so I'll play a chord and then I'll add the cymbal so you can hear the crowning glory there. Um, It's just enough, yeah. you know. So it's really convincing chorus, and even even the cornet in it. If you want to really, you know, play 
central German Bach. It really, really does work, you know. Um, incredibly convincing. Adding the Nazat in the two and two thirds in there as well. So yeah, the, yeah. Me, adding the tears in the Nazat right. in there as well. To get so, that. so, so that's the that's what the organ is built around, which is incredible. There is a Germanic trumpet which some might say is a little meek and mild, but I think it's incredibly period. And again, for me, it's a chorus read. Yeah, it's, it's um, bright, but it's not over piercing, which is kind of what sometimes we find on some of these period things. Just adds a little oomph. Too thin, but this yeah. is nice. This is, yeah. a, this is not out of control. Now, uh, to round out the great, you have a 16-foot Quintadena. you might want not to play it by itself. <laughs> but when you add it to, and then when you add the Quintadena, it works quite well in the chorus. Yeah. in the middle there. Now, I think the remarkable part about this organ is that it has all the flutes that you would want it, all the pitches that you would want, but every one to my ear is incredibly unique, mm. and yet they play well together. I think that's the brilliance okay. with this organ. Here's, here's the eight-foot spiel flute. Lovely. And here's a, a four-foot whole flute. It's got a really nice bright top, you know? And then when you put them together, they really are lovely. Um, Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I mean, that's the great division, which is enough to make anybody happy. Oh, but I have forgotten the Spanish trumpet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I will tell you that this organ is awaiting a restoration. Um, it's 50 years old this year, and so it's time for it to go uh, and, and just sort of be, um, as we say, gathered back together. <laughs> uh, and the Spanish trumpets are part of that. Um, the pipework isn't in great condition. Um, and so that will have to be part of the restoration. So forgive the tuning and all that sort of stuff. But it is kind of fun, you know. It makes nice. plenty of noise. Yeah, it's bright but, and it's uh, piercing, but not, uh, yeah. not overly loud, at least underneath it. <laughs> and, then, and then if you add the forefoot on top of it, it's even more ridiculous. <laughs> Um, they, it took me forever to figure out how to tune them because they're sort of laid out very strangely, like on tritones and things like that. So, and Beckerat did a lot of that stuff. You know, he would just he was very inventive with, like for example, the great trumpet is laid out in in thirds mm -hmm. instead of chromatic, you know, diatonically. And actually, you can rip through it once you figure that out. <laughs> you can rip through the tuning really fast. So it's it's great and it keeps the pipes from fighting, which is which is amazing. Um, mm -hmm. That's the great division. Now the swell. Um, is very complete. There's a 16-foot independent Borden right at the front of the swell box. Yeah. It's just a lovely undergirding sound. Um, and, and then th there's a, the, an 8-foot roar flute. There's a four-foot flute, which is an overblown flute, believe it or not. <laughs> I think it's lovely. It sounds like it belongs down there in the Kimball. Absolutely. <laughs> and you, you know, um, it, it's wonderful. Very versatile. And so you'd think, well, those are three very wildly different flutes. So how could they possibly pay together? But when you put them together, I hear every independent pitch incredibly well, and yet the milieu of the sound comes together in an incredible way. Right, right. That, that works really well. To, to add to that, there is a two-foot flute, which is, which is um, a little randy, but fun. Some, some crowning to that, too. <laughs> now, we have a gems horn. which has its own Celeste. Mm -hmm. 
and it is a mechanical swell box, so it is pretty, you can sit on it to really get it to close. It's quite versatile. Um, and then, as I mentioned, there's this three rank cornet, which of course is two and two thirds, uh, one and three fifths, and one and a seventh. And it makes a remarkable sound. With the tremolo, it's just a really yeah. lovely sound. Um, and I think I, I missed the four foot viola, so I'll go back to that. And it's really a nice, you know, it's a four foot principle, right? principle than string. Right. But again, it in terms of accompanying a choir, it really is, it's what you want at that point. And there is a five rank mixture, which is a two foot mixture, okay. uh, which is incredibly potent. <laughs> um, but it's very, very effective. That's with the gems horn and the viola. Yeah, it's quite there. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's quite. Very effective, right? Um, then we have these wonderful reeds uh, 16 foot dulzion, 8 foot oboe, and a 4 foot musette. And hmm. they have an incredible amount of color. So I very often use the dulcian up an octave as, a, as an alternative eight foot reed. Yeah. Um, I've used the musette down, you know, <laughs> because it's, it's really kind of plays with that Renaissance kazoo kind of a thing. Right? But when you put them together, It's definitely a, a, a sound of a period there, of those bright, thin reeds. Yeah. The, the oboe is almost a trumpet downstairs. Oh. Yeah, I can see that. And the dulcian up an octave is sort of a basset horn, or as I call it, a basset hound kind of a thing. Very convincing. So you have three very different reeds. Yeah. It's their shy little brother, you know, I mean, it just comes out. <laughs> but then they work together incredibly well so that you can really build a pretty good full swell sound. It's pretty potent. The mixtures and the reeds really work well together there yeah. to, to add a crown on top of that. So. And what's really great is the placement of the swells right above your head and everything's laid out exactly as it should be, of course. Um, and it, for choir accompaniment, it works really, really well. It's nice that it's not hidden behind another division as is sometimes done, yeah. or, you know, buried, because it, it closes tight. So, so it really works well. Um, then the root positive uh, has a beautiful eight foot flute. Of course, which sounds incredibly soft here. Yeah. But when you're in the room, the, the strength of the positive almost rivals the great. Oh, really? It's hard right. to believe. Um, oftentimes, if, if you look behind us, of course, the case is right there, and that, that floor pulls up. And I'll open the back of the case so that I can hear it and play <laughs> a little bit better together, yeah. um, because that is kind of a problem. Now, this Quintadena 8-foot is just to die for. And if you add the tremolo, which, I mean, you, you don't, I don't know where you were taught, but I, I mean, tremolo and quotidian, I don't know, they don't really go together. But, it's lovely, and it has enough fundamental to stand alone by itself. Exactly. And, just, yeah. and still have all that color on top. Yeah. So, and then we have a four foot flute. Four foot principle, which is in the facade. Okay. It's a beautiful. 
beautiful mm. solo stop. You do have to be careful because one might want to play um, like uh, the air on the G string or something and use that as a solo. But downstairs, that's really kind of all you hear. <laughs> so you have to be super careful about that. Um, and then there's a two foot octave. Really clean sound. Um, add to that a one foot sifflet. And the sound starts to get a little randy. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I was first here, we had uh, Jeremy Philsell here to play. And he characterized both organs, I think, in a, in a great way. He said it's like having a Maserati and a Bentley in the same room. <laughs> it's a good analogy, I think. Um, and there is there's a Quint a one and one third, which is nice too. And that's before you get to the four to six rank sharp, oh my God. which is incredibly <laughs> powerful, you know. There's not quite enough principle to pull that off, but it still is a convincing sound. I'm, I'm curious, for our, our listeners that are out there, can you compare, say, the great principal chorus to the positive? And we can hear how they... Absolutely. So you'll hear this on the audio. We won't hear it here. But um, so I'll play similar chords. I'll play a couple of chords on the positive, and then I'll do the same thing on the great. So... The, the reverb is telling me that those are actually somewhat similar in power and volume, but uh, until we can listen to the tape, we'll know for sure. Right. And then there's this incredible sesquialter, which is just incredible. Um, what did I play the other day? Yeah. Or without the tremolo, even. Apologies to Hyler. It's, yeah, it's, it's really almost, I mean, I want to say like it's a, uh, uh, an Eastern sounding. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just so powerful. And usually the, it's really forward on top of the eight and four. I and would so. agree. Now, I think this is the best chrome horn in the world. <laughs> but of course, you know, there are many great best chrome horns in the world. But it's We're going to start a contest. Of, yeah, right? more German crumb horn than a French crumb horn, but it's, yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's really lovely, and it plays well with the tremolo as well, which is it's incredible. So it's a wonderful thing. Y unique about this organ, but not necessarily unique about Baccarat's, is that um, all those, there's swell to great couplers, there's positive great couplers. There is no swelled positive coupler on this organ. And many people suggested, oh, wouldn't it just be the perfect thing if there was a swell to positive coupler? And maybe they're right, but I feel like if Becquerot wanted a swell to positive coupler, he would have put one on. And I think he knew that because of the seasonal changes and the altitude changes, mm -hmm. that could be problematic. Well, that's fair. Um, so when I play Franck, which you can play on this organ, um, I play it as a two manual instrument. Mm. You know, that's just how it works out for me. Everybody comes up with their own solution. So those are the manuals. Then, okay. we, then we have pedal, which is all independent. We have a 16 foot principal. The pedal is in two towers at the sides. Um, for the longest time, I felt like there's not enough 16-foot pitch in mm -hmm. this organ. It's not enough pedal. But over the years, I have learned, and listening to it, to the instrument in the room, that the room magnifies middle and low, and they're incredibly huge downstairs. So we're not getting it up here, but out there. Right, sure. right. Okay. So that's nice. You have an independent octave, an independent four foot octave, and then there's a six rank mixture at two and two thirds. You know, 
there's really no need for couplers in this organ. You have such complete ensembles in each manual and pedal. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I agree with that. I mean, you know, if it, you don't really need to do that. Uh, I do see a lot of people come, and the first thing they do is pull on the couplers and put things together. And I'm like, you know, it took you a while to figure that out too, Kevin. So they'll figure it out. It's okay. It just, it, yeah. yeah, everything seems to be designed to be independent and on its own, and, and yeah, and yet still complete. To me, registration on this organ is less is more. I mean, be as lean as you can, use as few stops as you can, and still achieve the factor that you want. That's just that's just me. Now, I mentioned this before. This independent wood. Uh, ten and two thirds mm -hmm. is so magnificent. So here's sixteen, eight, and four without that. Yeah. It's like a purring kitten. We're getting a very know? effective result in yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. Now, also um, in in the pedal, you have a, a sixteen foot sub bass. Just sort of lumbers around and does its duty. Uh, then you have a, a roar cadet at, at eight. And no borrowing, of course. Mm -hmm. There's no four foot flute in the pedal on this organ, um, which is, I suppose, if, if I woke up someday and had a magic wand, I might want that. However, you do have a two foot flute. It's an interesting design choice. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, for Buxtehude, you know, maybe like at the beginning of the Vishon Leuchtet or something, you know. It's absolutely brilliant. True. Yeah. I mentioned this Bast sync. So here's the 16, 8, and 4 principal chorus again. And then you add this Bast sync. I think it's brilliant. What two, what two pitches are we getting from that? Three pitches. Three pitches. Um, I knew you were going to ask me that, and I was thinking, like, oh, I shouldn't have said that until I can remember. Well, but let's, <laughs> let's figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Play low C. So we're getting a seventh and a third, and something else is in. There's third and a fifth. We're getting second. We're getting a ninth. That's remarkable. Seven, nine chord. In. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it is, it's, it's just... It's really kind of lovely. Like maybe for Lubeck, where you want a 16 foot reed, of course, but you don't want a posauna. Yeah, right. And it really, that's one option. Of course, pulling the 16 foot reed down from the swell is another option. Mm -hmm. So, again, options are, are incredible. And then you have three independent reeds in the pedal a posauna. <laughs> The trumpet. And contra uh, contrast that with the great trumpet. A little bit fuller little now. Bit. And then a four foot trumpet. It seems like that gets bigger as we go up. And I think so. And, and then you put them together. And then when you build some things together. It, this is brilliant. It all, all works together very, very well. Um, if I were to play, you know, some Bach, I'm not sure how far I can get with this, but from memory, but we'll see. I might do something like this. It's all very clear, and the, the pedal yeah. cuts through just fine without being overwhelming. So, yeah. 
it's a, it's a wonderful instrument, um, and it, it's it's a pleasure to play. And um, the organist choir master emeritus uh, G. Denny Bernard uh, said something to me years ago, which I completely have come to agree with, and that is that every time I sit down at this organ, it teaches me something about <laughs> playing, and it is an absolute joy. Um, because every sound is unique, every sound is full of life, and it's just such a vibrant, vibrant instrument magnified by a great room. So as Kevin mentioned, there's an insert here on the floor that can be lifted up, and that allows access into the positive by opening these doors. Looking in, we see the crumhorn in the back. Up in the front is the quintadina, which is wood and metal. And a flute behind it. Then going back to the main case, there's an access door back here at the back. Going in there gets us behind the console. You see the electronics for the combination action and the stop action. The tracker's going up to the swell. There's the roller board for the swell, which is right above us. And the blower's in here as well. And then to get up to the swell, we have to go around to the back, and ladders are involved. So after some maneuvering of ladders and climbing, we are up in the swell. There's a little walkboard behind the case. The doors open in. And the first thing we see are the reeds, the four-foot musette and the eight-foot oval. There's the 16-foot fractional length. Some emergency repairs obviously had to be made there. Now the grate is above us, and there's another level of the walkboard uh, to get up to it. Unfortunately, due to all of the uh, requirements for getting up there and time constraints on the day, we didn't actually get into the grate. So I'm afraid that's all we have to show you of this wonderful organ right now. Kevin, thank you so much for demonstrating the uh, Beckerat organ here at First Congregational in downtown Columbus. This is our first Beckerat organ we've gotten to show off, oh, wow. uh, and it's, it was surprising. There were a lot of things that uh, I maybe wouldn't have expected, given what little I know about them. So this has been very educational, and I uh, hope everyone has enjoyed it as much as I have. It's our pleasure to have you here. Glad you're here. If you did enjoy it, then please uh, give Kevin a thumbs up down there in the uh, below this video, uh, and leave comments if you'd like. We always love hearing from you. This organ, of course, is one of many that will be featured on the 2022. Oregon Historical Society Convention, which is coming up right here in Columbus. And uh, there'll be a concert on this organ as well. Yes, the convention will open on the very first night with actually two concerts. So um, Peter Sykes will play this instrument, and as you, as you said in the other video about the Kimball, um, Damon Spritzer will play the other end, but it's a sort of a dual concert. It's going to be, be very that's going to be a fantastic night to hear both of these. And again, if you missed that video, there's a link down in the description for a video about the Kimball organ that's in the other side of this building. But this has been a fantastic uh, trip here. It's so great to see it. My thanks to Mary J. Worst, who is a sponsor of the Oregon Media Foundation and made this trip possible. If you would like to become a sponsor and help us make more videos like this one, visit our website at Oregon.media. There's a link down in the description. Please make sure you're subscribed to our channel and click the bell for notifications because we have more videos from Columbus and more OH chess organs coming up. Uh, I'm really excited to be here sharing them with you. Uh, until that next video is out, you can always find streaming classical organ music on our three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Thank you again. This has been wonderful to come to First Congregational. I appreciate all you've done uh, for, for the organ world with these two instruments and showing them off and uh, keeping them in wonderful playing condition. Keep coming to hear us. We'll be back. And uh, until then, I'm Brent Johnson. Thanks for watching.